Hello, everybody. Welcome to our breakout session, Securing Your Seat at the Table. My name is Allison Furneaux, and I'm the CMO here at CyberSaint. Today, I'm joined by Rinky Sethi, CISO at Bell.com, to discuss her journey to becoming a renowned security leader and a board member. Welcome, Rinky. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Allison. So I always find it interesting how successful leaders got started in the first place and got to where they are today. So can you talk a little bit about your childhood and how you were first exposed to cybersecurity? Yeah, definitely. So I entered the cybersecurity industry um, by accident through a pizza night that I went to. Um, it was uh, a, a company was recruiting in college. My friend was actually being recruited for it. And she was like, hey, just come with me, free pizza. And I ended up talking to one of the hiring managers who was uh, hiring for an information protection analyst. And so he asked me what my favorite course was. And I said, cryptography. And he was like, I'm hiring for a role that's right up your alley. I would love to interview you for it. And the rest was history. So that was what right out of college, I started in the cybersecurity space. Um, but I think I had a knack for it earlier, um, which was when I was a kid, um, we used to chat. We didn't have Slack back then. We had AOL Instant Messenger, which was our way of chatting with friends back then. And um, we would do that, you know, and we'd like hide from our parents and be chatting with our friends at night and stuff. And one day I hear my dad talking to my mom about something that I had chatted with my friends about. And I was like, I overheard it. And I'm like, how would he have known that unless he was reading my chats? And so I found out that he had put a parental spy tool, also known as a keylogger, on my <laughs> machine. And he was reading all my chats. And so after that, I uh, he I would uninstall it. He would install it back again. We'd mess with him, me and my sister. We'd write things um, purposefully to just get him scared. And then I ended up writing a program that would detect every time he installed it and uninstall it. And then we played this cat and mouse game. Um, but I think I had kind of a hacker's mind back then and just how do I uh, evade things like that? And so um, I think my passion for it was way earlier than I actually got into the industry. Oh, that's so funny. I love that. Um, and I mean, it led you into a fascinating career. Like you worked at companies like Walmart, IBM, eBay, Intuit, Palo Alto Networks. Um, you've you know led security there at Palo Alto, Rubric, and Twitter, all before joining Bill.com, where you are now, a CISO, and a Ford Rock as a board member as well. Um, can you talk about your experiences throughout your career and how they've shaped your leadership skills as a CISO? Yeah, um, it's it's so interesting because if you had asked me early on, I never thought that I'd be a CISO. Um, I don't even think that that word existed at most companies back then. Um, but one, uh, I've taken an interesting path that I, when I first started, I was in the audit and compliance space um, and quickly realized that that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into security engineering. And so one of the things that I think has helped me is I've never felt stuck. I've moved around a lot because I've wanted to expand my skills and get and make sure that I'm challenged um, at every point along the way. So I started off as a security engineer, found my passion in that which was around security culture change and how do you win in uh, the hearts and minds of developers to really own security. And so I'm on a constant mission of wanting to do that. And so that was my passion that took me to a security culture change job, um, and, which was really difficult. And I learned more, how do you communicate? How do you build strong relationships? How do you influence, which actually is a real core skill set that you need in, as a CISO. Um, and so I built that. I then went to lead security product security. I then, when I built out an organization, a global organization that was transforming into the cloud, um, and then went from that to leading security operations, built out a program from scratch for a leading cybersecurity company. Um, and that's kind of what took me into the CISO path. And I think every skill I've learned along the way has helped me. And the fact that I've led all these different areas of security has kind of made me a better rounded CISO. And how do you think it prepared you for your board seat that you have now at Ford Rock? A couple things. So one, um, I think my role at Palo Alto Networks was a really important one because it took me from having a back office security role to how do you really communicate effectively to customers around how you're deploying some of these products around in everything. Also, how, how you're showing that data drives a security program, what's the right data to bring to the forefront, how do you communicate with people and are on your feet, and it kind of like lifted my profile a little bit, 
Um, and I think it was a Im really important one, um, but I wasn't ready for a board seat back then. I think that combined with just being able to communicate well, as well as building out a network. I met so many CISOs built out a really solid network um, and then took on the CISO role several times myself. And um, I think all those things kind of helped with the board position. Um, and, you know, boards are looking now more than ever to diversify and to add cybersecurity expertise onto um, boards. And so it became kind of a magical connection that it was my network. It was being in the CISO role and kind of bringing a fresh perspective that all helped uh, land the Forge Rock board position. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You were talking about how you started out in security before the CISO role is even really a thing. Um, and Gartner did a board of directors survey this year, and they found that 80% of board members see cybersecurity as a business risk, not a technical risk anymore. And it, I think that was up from like, uh, you know, I think it was up 60% since 2016. So things have changed quite a bit. Um, why do you think, you know, now, especially now, post COVID, um, people are looking at cybersecurity, especially boards are looking at cybersecurity, you know, as a true business risk and looking to add that cybersecurity expertise onto their boards. There's so many reasons for it. Number one, um, cybersecurity breaches we've seen have impacted companies in pretty devastating ways, even if it's temporarily, it's, it's affects your shareholder price. It affects everything. Um, that's one, but I think more than you're seeing more mandates, more regulatory requirements to have cybersecurity expertise on the board. And now CISOs are reporting quarterly to the board and not only just the board, but it might be a cyber risk committee or cybersecurity committee that have, has formed that the CISO needs to report up to. Um, and a lot of times this is part of the SEC filing that CISOs actually need to sign off saying that, you know, what whatever it is around security is truly stated. And so with all of these things, it's no longer this technical back office rule. It's now a pretty influential rule across the business. And it's our job to ensure that the company is aware of risks, the right people know around about what risks exist in the company. And it's a, you know, it can be a business enabler, but it's also a critical part of the business. Do you think that CISOs could have taken more board positions in the past? Or do you really think that now is the kind of the perfect storm, like the perfect time for CISOs to start taking those roles? I think um, we started seeing CISOs take board positions for cybersecurity companies or really big advisor positions for cybersecurity companies. Right. Um, and I think it should have been thought about early on, but I think, and, and it's always like, you see these things lagging behind what's happening in industry. Um, but now I think every CISO should have a board position, should be on some board, especially when these mandates are actually in place and um, required. And so we, I think we're gonna see lots of CISOs taking on board positions. Uh, I think before, had they been in the on the board, if cybersecurity wasn't elevated at all companies to the board level, so a CISO being there may, would have added great light into or shed good light into kind of things the company needs to think about from a risk perspective. But now, I think more than ever, now CISOs are reporting and boards are realizing we don't have the expertise we need to even understand maybe what a CISO is presenting, and so you need that counterpart on the board. Do you think that? the CISO should be kind of that um, educator to the rest of the board, like educating the rest of the board on cybersecurity, or should they kind of remain as the kind of single expert on the board? Because I feel like I've, I've heard differing opinions on this a little bit. I think the, the main benefit you bring as a CISO on the board is you're able to ask questions, right? Like a lot of times we report things to the board, whatever set of data that we feel is relevant and um, important to make sure the board has knowledge about. But I think the CISO can act like a really great counterpart. And as they ask questions and dive in deeper, the CISO that's on the board, uh, the rest of the board is going to learn from that. And if they're sitting on other boards, it's going to make them more valuable. So I think that by just being there, by being engaged, by asking the questions of the CISO and of other things, whether it's product roadmap and have they thought of certain things, the board is going to get educated as an indirect kind of benefit. Yeah, as a byproduct of just having a CISO on the board in the first place. That's right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And we'll talk in a little bit about kind of what a board meeting looks like through your eyes and like how a CISO can add value. But um, first, I want to hear a little bit about how you approach the process of finding a board seat in the first place. You mentioned your network and like building community and connections. Um, but what steps did you take to optimize the outcome, you know, when you were approaching that, that process? 
I put the word out there that I was interested. That was about 10 years ago before I like, I was totally not ready back then to be on a board. I didn't have the experience that would have made me a great board member, but I put the word out there that I was interested about 10 years ago. Um, and I got feedback that there's some stuff I need to work on. I joined some uh, women's groups that um, would help with board presence and leadership and help maybe even match for board positions. That didn't really work well for me. I felt that it was really focused on changing kind of the way I spoke and the way that I presented myself. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to match for a board position so that I could learn and grow and, you know, make mistakes and just be on a board. And I think being on a board is the best way to learn, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to be a good board member. And so I put the word out there um, and I told my mentors and I told my folks that had influence that I'm looking for a board position. I'm involved with a lot of startup com uh, companies. And I told them, I'm, if you a board position opens up, consider me for it. And eventually it was someone from my network that reached out and the timing was good. I was ready um, to be a board member. They were looking at a CISO. It's all the things kind of mapped up and it was my network that actually ended up helping me match for my first board position. Um, the other thing I think that helped was I love being plugged into the startup community. I learn a lot from it. I think it keeps me current as a CISO. And I've advised a lot of companies, like I love advising CyberState as an example. And um, I think that that's also helped me quite a bit in getting ready for that board position. Yeah. What tips can you give CISOs on building that network effects and that community around them so that they can have these opportunities? I think it's really important to network. You can start with the cybersecurity community to, you know, network with CEOs of those companies, make sure that you're keeping mentors and that those mentors are meaningful connections um, and getting the word out there that that's something that you're interested in um, and ensuring, of course, that your company also allows you to take board positions. I think all those things, but it's definitely getting the word out there that that's something you're interested in. I think it's important to keep your, uh, you know, LinkedIn or whatever you use for your profile to make sure that's updated as well. So folks know kind of what value you would bring to a board because not every company is the right fit. And so you want to figure that out as well. Um, but I think it's getting the word out there that, hey, I'm open to board positions and making sure that you're staying connected to your network. It's not just having the network, but that you're staying connected to the folks that in your network as well and, and communicating with them and staying engaged. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, it being the right fit and I'm sure for everyone, that's a little bit different, but what were the indicators for you that this was the right fit for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I know for a fact that I was going to be a young board member joining. Um, and I, I knew that I had no board experience going in. So some of the things that were important to me was making sure I join a board that has really good dynamics where they work well together. There's not friction. There's not, you know, act, activist investors involved, none of that. Like I wanted to join a board that was very warm and kind of, they got along. Um, I wanted to join a board in which I really believed in the CEO and that um, that would be a good relationship and that the CEO saw value in what I was bringing on as well. Um, and then, um, I, I wanted to make sure I would have mentors on the board that I could ask questions if I didn't understand certain things um, and if I needed to deep dive in. Those were the things I looked out for and I got really, really lucky with Forge Rock. That's awesome. I'm so glad. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the actual, you know, for those who don't know what a board meeting looks like and how a CISO or security leader who's in that role can add value. Um, what does it look like through the eyes of a CISO? What has your experience been like and how have you found, you know, those opportunities to find the, add the most value? Yeah. So, I mean, I joined, not all boards are like this, but I joined a board where the CEO is very transparent with the board as to like what's going on in the business. And it's every aspect of the business, right? You hear about the financials, the areas that are going really well as it relates to sales, areas that they might be struggling with, whether it's related to attrition, um, changes that they may need to make in compensation. There's so many things that are covered. Many times there will be some special topics like, hey, this is what we're thinking about in terms of the product roadmap, or the CISO will come, the CISO of the company will come and give a report out as to the key risks and where the focus areas are, if there's incidents that need to be discussed. So there's so much in that board meeting. What's I think a really great part is because I'm on a cybersecurity board, I can contribute back and share with them feedback 
on the product and how add that customer lens. Also um, hearing the CISO, I can kind of make sure that there's a relationship there inside and outside the boardroom um, and ask questions and make sure that what's top of mind is actually being discussed in the boardroom. And then of course, I'm part of their network now. So as they're selling product and they need somebody um, that they need to reach out to somebody who I'm connected to, of course, I can help in those ways as well. Um, but I will also flip it. It's actually made me a better CISO to be in the boardroom as well, right? Because I'm hearing about parts of the business that I may not even hear about in the company that I'm at um, just because of the nature of the role. And so I, it make, gives me such a better business lens as I'm going and talking to leaders in my existing role. So I think it's both ways. It's a really, really good thing. That's great. Um, I guess we're at our last question, which is crazy, but what is your call to action for CISOs looking to make their next move into the boardroom? Yeah, I would, I would say we need you. So definitely put the word out there that you're looking for board positions. There's lots of board uh, matching sites that you can join as well. Um, start with advisor uh, type positions if that, so you can start getting the feel of what it might be like uh, to be a board member. Um, and then, yeah, make sure that once you if there is, if you get to a point where there's interviews that you find the right match for you, not, it's okay to say no, if it's not, it doesn't feel right because you want that first board experience to be a great one. Um, and so I think all those things are really important. Great. Well, this has been an awesome discussion. Thank you, Brinky, as always for spending the time with us. Um, we love working with you and, you know, love having you be a part of the cyber saint story. So we appreciate it. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. Please check out the other sessions that are part of Stronger 2022. We have a lot of fantastic content available for you and we will see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks.